All right, I'll call the Wellington Board of Education Curriculum Committee meeting to order on uh, it's December 15th, 2022 at 520 p.m. We have a brief agenda call the order science curriculum feedback, uh, re review the phonics curriculum and adjournment. And so we have Kristen Stevens here and Aaron Conley as well, doctor. So um, I will start with uh, board members. We went through the curriculum uh, work last time just to give you kind of the general layout uh, with the feeling of trying to make sure uh, you could have some time to get some feedback and understand the lay of the land. I know, Laura, you gave some feedback in. I'm not sure if anybody else has any feedback and uh, if you what you want to discuss in terms of in science, is it 5-8, Aaron? Yes, correct. The 5-8. Yeah, Laura, I saw your comments in um, the sixth grade unit. Oh, did I make them actually in the unit? <laughs> yeah, no, but no. Well, in the one that we shared with you, I pulled the one the one up. Okay. And so and so what Laura's if you guys didn't see them, she added under summative amid the midpoint assessment. So I'll go back and add those um, add that and then uh, under under integration um, ELA content literature. Those were the two additions. I had some other things from being able to go into it more deeply, but I don't know where yeah, it's appropriate for me to share that. So no, go for it. Now's the time. Yep. And I have I have notes pulled up, so I'm just gonna type as you're talking. Okay. And I'm I'm trying to stay in my board of ed role, <laughs> which, which science is the hard one for me, right? <laughs> um so, so some some real positives first of of what I saw, right? And open science that I'm very familiar with. Um, so, I I really liked the the layout of of your units, how you took them from open science ed and made them into the one document um, that was easy to navigate. And then and then you also uh, gave us access to all the different lessons. So I I thought that that was very user friendly. Looking at at the open science ed, um, you know, it's it's all aligned to NGSS. It's got the elements of three-dimensional instruction. Um, I think I asked you this before, but, and um, you're um, familiar with ambitious science teaching. Yes or no, maybe? Pro no, is it a program? Yes. Ambitious science teaching. If not, take a look. But it's open science that is incorporating the core set of practices that are also in ambitious science teaching, which is by some of the top science ed researchers. Um, so I was really glad to see that, that planning for engagement, big ideas, eliciting student understanding, supporting the ongoing changes in thinking, pressing for evidence-based explanations, you know, starting with the anchoring phenomenon, the, the different routines that you mentioned you had in the document. Um, the focus on the science and engineering practices, right? And, and especially uh, explanatory models. Uh, and I just, I have all, I just, I was just writing down as I saw them, like things that I was so happy to see, right? Building consensus models, that it's discourse rich, you know, productive science talk, um, the use of a driving question board, the use of science and engineering notebooks, attending to equity, um, universal design for learning, and then also the use of related phenomena. So that was, it was like a checklist. It was like, yeah, this is, this has got all these things. This is great. Um, where I came to some questions was looking at the individual units. Um, a couple of things, the, the middle, so this is middle school, fifth through eighth, which is different from NGSS, which middle school is six through eight. Fifth grade has its own set of standards. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what it seemed, what it looked like to me was because our middle school is fifth through eighth and fifth and sixth grade have half as much time as they should or at, at seventh and eighth grade. Um, it looked as though you took some of the sixth grade standards, split them into fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, for until they release fifth grade units, we were using two of this, the sixth grade, you, like more accessible. And when you look at, um, you know, an open sciad, the um, this is a dependency diagram, it might be called. 
where what they need to know prior in order. So we took the two lower sixth grade units and pushed them down to fifth grade. And fifth grade. Okay. So the plan is though, once there are open sign sets for fifth grades, you'll look at that, right? Because I'm 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 looking at this and I'm thinking, I mean, the first thing is that NGSS is is so planned out building one year to the next. And I know, you know, you don't have the elementary, but I can't help but really push for the increase in elementary time and, and addressing those standards that are built upon in middle school. Um, but I understand practicalities and you're using what you have right now. Um, so fifth and sixth grade, we're covering some of the sixth grade standards. Um, and I actually, I, I ended up mapping it out because I kind of wanted to see which standards you were, you were covering. And then, um, what did I have here? I said your rationale to focus in the sixth grade unit on transmission, reflection, refraction, and refraction in the in the unit one seemed very logical to me. And then that second unit on absorption with the cup unit. Um, and it seemed that was that when I asked the question, I was wondering if it was going to be next. And I think it was actually the next unit, wasn't it? Unit two. I can't remember now. Which one? It was the cup unit where you actually get into absorption with heat when you're when you're talking about um, heat transfer. I can't hold on. Let me. It, just you know, it's it's nitpicking. I'm sorry, and and this is where I start going into the the science educator. Um, I thought that that's I just been in math mode, so I if I have to recall something from a specific unit, it's going to take me a while. <laughs> um, but but I thought the rationale was was very good for that. Um, and then you said to wait to the eighth grade space unit discuss light as waves. And that also made a lot of sense to me. There's there's a huge difference between sixth and eighth grade um, in their ability to understand some of these abstract concepts, light waves being very abstract. Um, okay. And then in just, this is just to point out to you in the, in unit two of the sixth grade, it does say seventh grade on the document. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just to make sure you change that. All right. And do you know which one, uh, six, all the six? It actually is in fifth grade. So in the fifth grade, it says unit 6.1, because they're the sixth grade yeah. um, open science ed dealing with middle school science standards, because the middle school yeah. standards are not designated, you know, as, okay. as, yeah. This is for anyone else who doesn't know. I know you know, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, no, they're K five. They're good K five, and they're and then they're grade specific K five, right? And, and then, then they're a band six eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 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 I thought. I mean, all that was good. Um, here's my concern, and and I don't. I it's not anything that you've done with the curriculum. It's more, I think, just the logistics and time. You had to pick certain performance expectation standards. You could not teach them all because of the amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I was curious which ones you had picked and I actually mapped them out um, into the disciplinary areas. And four of the areas you, through fifth through eighth, um, one, two, yeah, four, four of them you hit on the, all the standards in that disciplinary area. Two of them, you have the majority, seven out of eight and three out of four. But there are three areas where um, you only have one out of the number of performance expectations. So ways and applications, there are three PEs and we're only hitting one and it's you're hitting it in sixth and in eighth grade. Ecosystems, interactions, energy, and dynamics, there are five, and we're and you're just hitting one, and that's in seventh grade. And then biological evolution, unity, and diversity is only one, and that's being hit in eighth grade. Um, and I think that's um, more genetics than evolution. So, so those were concerns of mine as far as in a disciplinary area, not hitting many of the standards across that band of five through eight. Okay, and I, I can send this to yeah. you if that helps. Yeah, if you can send it. So our goal too, so so whether it's doable or not, 
I guess it's kind of to be seen, but our goal in meeting with the teachers and picking these units, um, because they actually, I did, they actually had the dominant voice in which units we were doing um, outside from our data, knowing that we had to focus on earth and space systems, because that was our one area that our kids are just, that's the one area they're not performing at, at state. So we knew that had to go in there. Um, but our goal was to start with these and as they, knowing that it was going to be a trend, like getting them used to it, that we will add more in so that hopefully we can, we won't always be stuck with just four per grade for seven and eight. We'll be able to add, you know, eventually get six units or be able to cover everything. But they, I mean, you know, when you first start teaching like this, everything takes forever. Well, <laughs> And, and I'd rather you decide which ones you think are most important and spend that time than the way, you know, when I first came to, to, to Connecticut and they handed me the standards um, and it was like, it was ridiculous, you know, how much was supposed to be taught, you know, so again, you know, the NGSS is, is to go deeper rather than mm -hmm. that, you know, inch deep and a mile wide. Um, but I was concerned that there were three areas that that didn't seem to to have much addressed across the four years. So, but yeah, if you can send that, we'll, we will we can relook at that too. And that that would also prioritize what you know we do fit in or order you know work in next too. Okay. Yeah, you've got all of the uh, systems ones. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, yeah. <laughs> we said, oh, our, our kids are scoring on everything but this, so. Mm -hmm. Jump in, Ann. Um, it's a little off topic, but does this mean, does this mean that we really should try to work for um, a full science and social studies program in fifth and sixth grade also? I mean, does it mean we're not able to meet the standards by teaching them half time? Um, I mean, it definitely, ideally we would have full time science fifth through eighth grade. K through eight. I mean, well, K, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we will, the way the schedule is that with the content block, they would have science at the equivalent of, of I mean, basically every school I've been to that had a science block, they'll have a 45 minutes, a minimum three times a week. I mean, obviously you would love it every day, but I haven't seen any schedule that's been able to do that at an elementary school ever. So, um, but, but middle school, uh, especially with the grade band six through eight, I would absolutely, you know, try to push for the full time. Um, <laughs> Especially since in in Laura started talking about them earlier, the the discord. There's so many uh, transferable skills that are done so well within open science and so, the way science is taught um, that it just it permeates everything. You see more discourse in math. You see more discord like more discourse in ELA. Um, the trans the cross cutting concepts and skills that they're it's just it permeates everything. So not only just from a science perspective, but a POG perspective, it, it really inherently has a lot of that built in also. Okay, thank you. Honestly, Any Ann, I think that every content area fights for their time. <laughs> and if you look at the state recommended times the school day would be about 10 hours a day mm -hmm. especially if you have lunch and everything else in there lunch we need to eat lunch again. Yeah. <laughs> all kids <laughs> and adults uh, that's why integration is so important and i know you're going to be getting to that but yeah, that that is the only way to to fit it all in yeah. Yeah. And actually, I'll, I'll, this is a perfect segue um, or perfect uh, timing for that. So during our PLCs, which are um, grade level times at the elementary school, the teachers per grade level meet and we kind of focus in what we'll portrait the graduate skills. Um, the one they're focused on that they've been looking at this these upcoming reading and writing units um, 
they focused on uh, critical thinking and it's ask questions, collect information and transfer knowledge across disciplines. And actually all grades, kindergarten through fourth grade, um, use their science standards in conjunction with their, so all of the units they're currently moving into are integrated with uh, their science standards. That's great. So what do you want to do at this point? And I'm, Tracy, I'm not sure if you want to weigh in on anything, but what are your thoughts on based upon Laura's feedback and where we go from here as far as science goes? I I was going to say something. I didn't want to, I didn't know. Um, I'm sorry. Anyway, what I, I was going to mention what Laura said about the fifth grade units having the wrong not having saying sixth grade, not fifth grade, but also um, the formatting was a little off where um, like the headings came in in the middle of some of the um, columns and then the rest of the information would be below that. Um, It was the first fifth grade unit that I noticed that. So, it, you know, I could figure out where it was, but is it, if it was going to be going out, it might be confusing to some people, I guess is what I want to say. So I don't know why maybe there was a page break and then more information was put in. I'm just pull it up. Aaron, when we sent those, were they PDFs or, or docs? Um, They were... Oh, wait, no, am I confusing it with they were they're in docs. They're they're Google Doc. I was in my Wellington CT in the drive. Drive. So it should have come up the right way. Yeah. Oh, this is grade six. I'm in the wrong grade. That's why. Um Laura, when you send while she looks for that, will you when you send Aaron that your breakdown, will you send that to me too, please? Sure. Yeah. And maybe probably Ann and Tracy probably want to see that as well, just to see. Can you tell me what, what the three areas were that you said that were? The the way I coded it? Yeah. I coded it. Um, so I have the disciplinary areas, which you know, physical science, life science, earth, environmental, and engineering. And if, if, if you covered each of the performance expectations within that area, I gave it a green. Yeah. If it was most of them, I coded it yellow. And if it was missing most of them, uh, like it's one out of three, one out of five, one out of six, um, then I did it red. What so, was that one? That was what I want to know. The red ones? Yep. The red ones were waves and applications. And so there's, it's one out of three. Yep. That's in eighth grade, which waves, yeah. Okay. Um, second was ecosystems, interactions, energy, and dynamics. And there was just one out of five, which is in seventh grade. And then biological evolution, unity, and diversity, one out of six. And the one is hit in eighth grade. And actually there was one more, it was down on another page. Earth and human activity has five PEs and I didn't see any of them there. Okay. Yeah. Out of how many were there on that one? Zero out of five. Five. Thank you. What grade level was that? Uh, Earth and human activity. It's not in any of the grade levels. There should be some in in um, all of these. Well, it's middle school, right? So it's, okay, it could it could be <laughs> in, in any because of because it's zero that you don't see it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't see them in the document now. I get awfully tired when I'm doing these things. So <laughs> wild. that's, I just wanted to note so I, we can at least look specifically for that. Aaron, did you find out what you were looking for? No, I mean, I'm in the document and I, yeah, they are. And I actually, now I can speak to it. They, I did leave, I, I'll change them for time yeah. being, but I did keep them as grade six because eventually they're going to go back into grade six. Maybe, um, maybe even yeah. to put just like temporarily grade five or something. Yeah. The, the issue you're going to hit, though, if if you're teaching fifth grade, sixth grade standards is that year when you make the switch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have had those. So we're, we're yeah. doing that now. I mean, for for phonics, I mean, Kristen will speak to that 
I mean, we're, we're filling gaps. And right. I think that's when, whenever you have that transition, you're always going to be filling gaps until you can, you're caught up and you can, yes, you know, yeah. get the, the role going. And so, well, but, but Tracy, I'm in that first one. And I don't see if there's any way you could go back in and make, if you could add a comment where you see that misalignment, it'll, it'll send me an email and I, it'll just automatically do it. And it'll say like, someone made a comment and then I can be directed to where you're looking. Cause I'm not seeing it right now. Okay. I'll look at home. It, it happened several times. Maybe it was the way I, maybe I didn't. Or maybe the browser. I'm, I'm in my car on my phone. Yeah. So. You know, no what, rush. you know what home. sometimes does that if you were in Google Docs, if you change your zoom level to make the font bigger, just like you go to zoom like one 120%, sometimes it throws that off. I've had that happen before. So if you put it back to 100%, that's where the it, it will flow. I've I've seen that before. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but that could be something that it could be. It, it could be because maybe I was trying to. um. I can't remember if I was reading on um, on my computer screen, but yeah, as we get older, we sometimes we have to zoom in a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I'll I'll take a look at that. I don't. Yeah, everything else. I I I think the format is great. I didn't get into the specifics as a science isn't my area, so I'm glad Laura <laughs> looked into things more so, deeply. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Do you any other final feedback? Before, are we going to move into the role well, of phonics? Know, before we move to phonics? I want to know what your what your oh. thoughts are. What are your moving forward? So my my thoughts are that that you've you've done a lot of work, and these are really good units, and I think it's a really good place to get started. Um, with the understanding that again, these are living documents. This is the beginning. You're gonna be able to add. And as you get more units at the elementary level, you make that gaps. transition. Yeah, mm -hmm. fifth grade. Yep. And I'm glad you're transitioning out of mystery science also. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a tough one for the teachers at the elementary school, but yes. <laughs> they love mystery science, but I'm trying to explain to them that it's a nice placeholder. That's That's what it is. <laughs> And, and there are good aspects to it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not a comprehensive curriculum. I think right now for us, it's consistency. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I just heard, Laura, and I'm 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 going to say what I think you were saying is push this set of units to the board with the understanding that we will work on our side. You, you've identified some holes to make sure we target those holes moving forward as more elementary materials come in and or I guess that it's actually shared with us um, and understanding that those four areas really we need to be thoughtful and make sure we are targeting those areas as well and there's some balance is that what I'm hearing you say that's 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 what I was saying I don't know if Ann and, and Tracy agree but yeah you you captured my idea yeah um, can you remember Remind me of the time frame for when these units were um, thought to be rolled out, I guess, to start. The, these current, the ones that we're looking at now? Yes. Well, they're actually being piloted, like they're piloting the first ones right now. Okay, so they're already using them. Yeah. Because um, I think that some of the questions the other day, um, Herb was asking when we might be rolling, you know, coming up with some more curriculum to bring to the full board. Did I lose you? Do you, do you, oh, I don't hear any of you. That there's more coming late. I think you just connected to your car, Gracie. Yep, sorry. It's okay. okay. I thought just, it was me. Just no, me. I'm dying. Sorry, I gotta figure out how to. The audio here on my there we go. So I think what Tracy was saying, Aaron, is that Herb was asking about the science the other day. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I think if this is in a position to send it to them, it's not a bad thing. She's asking about the time frame for the full board approval. Do you know, do you have that calendar in front of you? What that date is? Um, 
And does if we postpone this, does that or do we throw our dates off, or would it hurt us at all? Or Tracy, did I? Get yeah, I was. Yeah, I just want. I think that the board is um, is interested in continuing to review curriculum. So I think I don't think I think it'd be a good thing to continue, as we said, just as long as the understanding for them as well as the public somewhere it says you know parents that there's more to come in the future this isn't the the complete curriculum yet right and that's laura's comment living document living document we just need to keep saying that there are going to be constant adjustments um for improvements and uh, we just have to keep saying that because as soon as it doesn't become a living document it's not happening yeah that's well, that's going to also be a thing we talk about in the phonics. We're gonna, that's going to be really important when we look at our phonics units too. I and I've mentioned, you know, I even talk to you know teachers and coaches when we talk about this is iteration one, <laughs> um, right. because to get where you need to go, sometimes you need to go through those steps. You can't just leap. Um, so, so Ann, are yeah. you good with that? Then are you yep. good with the? Yeah, I'm. I'm still concerned. Um, are, have we eliminated goals at the fifth and the sixth grade level? Is that why the overlap? Um, I guess I'm still unclear about that. Have we met all of the targeted standards? At no, what they're sixth? saying, Ann, is the open SIED is really only, it's not written for fifth grade yet, if I'm understanding that properly. That, that oh, okay. entry, it's six, eight so far um, okay. that we have. And so it's got to be, it was supposed to have been out already. It's not here yet, but it's coming. Um, I know too bad, but it's it, you know, I it's worth waiting for. Um, because number one, it's free, and number two, it's quality. Mm -hmm. So um, once that comes in, that's why the transition backwards to fifth grade um mm -hmm. with those units. Um okay. And do we do we think that when they do, well, I guess we don't know if they don't arrive, but it, are we meeting all the sixth grade standards? Are we teaching to those standards with the half time schedule? Um, no, well, honestly, we're not teaching to all the standards at any grade level because they're just so enormous. Uh, I mean, okay. to, to get them all. So that's what Laura was saying, you know, since we know that's a huge thing be her, my like her she was kind of saying let's be strategic to make sure we hit all the disciplinary pieces um okay. so that so as long as you know if we're looking at those we're looking at the performance expectations and making sure that you know while we might do, might not do them all we can go deeper but make sure they're balanced okay very good all right thank you yeah and, i'm i'm good to go and think about readers and writers workshop when it first came out one unit that they say or one you know lesson is that's supposed to be uh a day some of those were like five days worth mm. and so you know they write some of these things with the expectation that you're going to do it in this period of time and they're not realistic in in application i mean some of these are just not and so trying to make sure we have balance is important and the nice thing, the nice thing about the way the science standards are written, because they're they're three dimensional, um, you know, if you, you don't necessarily have to have every single content area in order to be able to answer questions, if you if you really understand the practices deeply um, and the cross cutting concepts. So that's what that balance is important, because then you can apply that same knowledge that transfers. So it, it you could it's still you could still do without doing everything you can still get um how would i say produce successful citizens or produce su <laughs> successful scientists <laughs> yeah okay thank you okay so we can send that out and uh i'll i'll we can write something aaron that just you know as i forward it to the board just to say more to come this mm -hmm. is you know round one of what you're getting so five eight all right let's talk phonics all right, do you mind if I share my screen? I do right this second because I need to change the settings. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. Sorry. All right, thanks. All right, and I'm going to. Sorry, don't ignore my crazy busy desktop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mary Kay has the tabs. I have the unorganized desktop. Okay. They have things called folders. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do every once in a while I'll stop and just organize everything, but it's not organized this second. Um Okay, so I put together kind of because uh, I started to roll put this together too because I know when we roll out to the board I wanted to have um, kind of this the presentation um, it, and I know you guys gave me some great advice last time too on and suggestions on rolling it out and what to include so I thought hey let me start here so you guys give me feedback on this too um, so phonics and word study and I know my BFF Kristen is on here too. Um, who was, she was right at my side for all of this work. Uh, so starting kind of the why, and you've heard us use this term science of reading. And the reason, you know, this, this kind of this, the science of reading, you've heard us talk about uh, the research behind, they've been studying brains and how we learn to read and kind of the steps we go through and what the most effective strategies are. But what we often don't think about is like, what are those all small little discrete skills and things that we need to know in order to read? And this reading rope does a great job. Actually, let me do a view slideshow. I think this reading rope does a great job of at showing all of those very discrete things that make up a skilled reader. Um, what these phonics units focus on are word the word recognition pieces. So the, the kindergarten through second grade and part of third grade units focus down there on that word recognition, phonological awareness, decoding, and sight recognition. As we move into the upper grades, we start to pull into more of that language comprehension with the vocabulary, language structure, um, they sometimes we hit on some the like metaphor metaphors or other pieces of this but predominantly we're looking at the vocabulary and the language structure um with some dabbling in some of those other language comprehension skills so you'll see kind of we move out of the word recognition and that becomes kind of a needs based at the upper grades and kind of into more of the word work or morphology at those language comprehension um levels Kristen do you want to add anything to that no, that sounds good. Okay, good. <laughs> so great grades kindergarten through second grade. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do this twofold. One, there's what the, the curriculum was written kind of again as an iteration, but looking forwards to when kids can access everything. Right now, and Phil kind of addressed this, right now we're in a transition period. So we know where this, we know where they need to be and we know where they are and we're trying to build this bridge. So I broke this into kindergarten through second grade. Then we have a three, four, which is like this transitionary period currently. And then we have a five, eight. Eventually three, four will, will lean more towards the five, eight um, with the foundational skills really being in K2. But right now they're really in this trying to bridge the gap. So I, I organized it that way. Our major resource for kindergarten through second grade is this. It's U University of Florida Literacy Institute. That's what UFLY is the acronym for. Um, this link is connected. So if anyone wants to research this further, um, everything is right here. UFLY is also um, an open source. So it's actually also free. We did pay for manuals, but everything uh, digitally is found here, especially in this toolbox. Um, but this gives you the background here of kind of what is UFLY. It's a very uh, carefully developed as a very sequential scope and sequence. It's very routine. Um, it's very, uh, it's direct instruction in the sense of it's explicit, um, specific, and very sequenced. And you'll see here, these are all the different questions you can review down, down below. We'll scroll. These are all the components. These are the eight steps. So every new concept, to goes through these eight steps. It's very routine and it's broken down and you'll see in uh, the unit in a second, but it's broken down in steps one through five, the first day, uh, six through eight, the second day, then you introduce a new concept, steps one through five, steps six, six through eight. And then after you introduce those two new concepts, you do, a, there's a review day and then you go back and teach a new concept. So it's a very routine program, um, specific skills, um, again, it's very, very much in line with the science of reading. Uh, University of Florida was, was very uh, instrumental in, in that research, um, and they've been a huge part of pushing out professional development as well as this curricular resource. 
Um, and again, this is full of some information, but I wanted to show you, um, is it, the, maybe it's in here, the toolbox. Yeah, so lesson resources. So you can see here, again, if you're curious what, a, what a, kind of what the lesson looks like, you can find pretty much everything in here and they're organized by the lesson. So if you're curious, even when you're looking at the um, units and you're saying, oh, what is lesson two? You know, what does that lesson actually look like? You can go in here, you can go to lesson two. Here's the concept they're learning. Mm, here's the PowerPoint slides. So you can look it up just, this is what they use to teach. These are the slides they're using to teach. Um, or wait, well, sorry, this is. <laughs> um, and so again, so you can see the lessons, you can see what their concept is, if there's a practice activity, but everything, decodable passages, you can see, you can pull up anything from that link. So if you're, you know, want to go a little bit deeper. But that is our major resource. All, all teachers currently do have the manuals. Um, Kristen has been working. I, I don't even know. Diligently is not, it doesn't even cover it. <laughs> um, she has been run ragged, really, um, working in classrooms, really getting teachers up to speed, figuring out, you know, how what this looks like in practice, really coaching them in terms of all of the components. Um, but she's been really focusing on this uh, kindergarten through second, or actually kindergarten through fourth grade, because um, I'm going to go over that in a second. All right, so kindergarten through second grade units before I open one. So UFLY is their major resource. It does utilize a sound wall, which I'm going to show you in just a second. They focus on word recognition. Uh, it, this pre predominantly focuses on the word recognition part of Scarborough's rope. It does, as I mentioned, follows a very routine procedure for each lesson. Um, these are the steps for each concept. Um, and I mentioned the pacing, the five day pacing. This is a sound wall. So if you've heard this term, you probably you might have heard it and you're going, no idea what that means. It is so mm -hmm. the and this is very different from the way we were taught. Oops, no, go back. I wanted, I wanted to zoom in, but I don't know if I can. I guess I can't. Um you can't when you're presenting. Yeah. So, but you'll notice if you look carefully. So there's two, there's the consonants over to the right, and then there's vowel valley to the left. And the way the sound wall is set up is one thing they they really specifically have learned in the science of reading is how we form sounds is equally as important to the letter, the grapheme, as well as what sound it actually makes. So instead of just teaching like b, b, b we have to show like the kids use mirrors and they look at their actual pronunciation and what their lips do and what their tongue does, um, as well as organizing organizing um, your wall by sounds, not by letter. So you know how we used to have A and then all the A words and B and then all the B words. So instead of going by the grapheme or the letter, we now organize things by the sound or the graphemes that make that sound. So you'll see here um, short, I think is that a short A right there? Um, has like a, 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 the a for, a for Apple. But then you'll see under the short U that you can, or this is long, long A, sorry. Um, so you, you can have apron, you can have A consonant E, um, and there's different ways to get that A sound. So it's, or all, everything's organized by sound. So that's the biggest difference, um, or that's a huge difference. Um, and so Kristen's been working with teachers to put these up in every room. Um, Cause they, and basically the way you fly works is you teach one of these, you introduce it, and then you together kind of put it on the sound wall in practice. Kristen, do you want to add anything? No, you're doing great. <laughs> Thanks. I will. Okay. I, I think one thing, and again, I always tie, I think it's important to tie money to this. When I, I think it was when I was watching Kristen present one of these things and the, it was a conversation about, well, what could we buy these posters or could we buy these things? And those are yes answers for us right now. So when we talk about budgeting funds, like it's important that teachers have the materials to do this type of stuff um, and not trying to recreate it themselves that if we can keep posters up as references in other classrooms that we do those things. And a poster is a simple example um, but like the teacher manuals were a big deal. Um, even though this is a free resource, we wanted to make sure our teachers had a manual to make sure they were, you know, implementing the way we were wanting them to implement. So 
just tying dollars to, to this. So mm -hmm. I have a question about the sound wall. So is this is this the sort of thing where at the beginning of the year, as they start to learn, you put up the first piece that you're learning and add on during the year, or is it up there and then you just focus on one section of it at a time? Great question. Yeah. Can I answer that or do you want sure to go ahead? Okay. So there's really, it can go either way. So it's um, the way that we've done it this year and it's worked very well is we build the sound wall with the kids. So you go from um, this sound wall is missing a lot of, it's missing some of the headings and things. So that basically like you start with um, a certain like a stop sounds and voice sounds and unvoiced sounds. You go through like all the different sets of sounds and you do it together. Um, so by category, and then you start teaching the actual phonics lessons where you start introducing like the letters and the letter combinations, but you do, it, this is really intended to start in kindergarten and you do this in kindergarten, then you review it and you put it up. It might, in first grade, it would probably just be up. And then second, it would probably just be up and third and fourth may or may not have one. They might have um, just a poster somewhere that's small, but really in kindergarten, there are lessons A through J, however many, many lessons that is, where they are, the lessons are scripted on how you are to put up this wall with kids. But um, some teachers have put the wall up ahead of time and then covered up parts and then they uncover, it's like a grand unveiling every time they learn a new sound. That's a cool idea. I was just thinking it seemed like an awful lot of information if they were just starting to learn it. Agreed. That's exactly what you just said. Either you're building it or you're revealing yes you learn it and then once they've everything you know they've they've covered everything then it's there as a resource to use yes and you continue to add to it because like like aaron was saying like, um there are there's eight ways to spell long a so you learn them as you, you learn as you go so that's why it's really great to have a sound wall or something like it in the older grades because you don't learn all the eight ways to spell long a in the first it through K one and two, but in third grade, fourth grade, the upper grades, um, they learn some more of those more complicated and sophisticated patterns. So to have this in the back, like kind of in their back pocket later on in the grades is good. That's very cool. I I do have to ask, what is affricates? <laughs> so an affricate is um. There's two sounds. There's a stop sound, which is where you like a p or a b. And you have the kids put their, their hand in front of their mouth and they and then they feel how the sound puffs out and then stops. So those are sounds that stops. There's continuous sounds like mm, that keep going. And so a stop sound. And then there's sounds called fricatives where mm -hmm. um, you can feel like friction as you're making the sound in your mouth. So a stop sound and, and a fricative together is an affricate. Stop sound and a fricative together is an affricate. Yes. I'm I am going to wow my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids do really well with them because we do take them step by step and we do teach all that language. Even I started with pre-K last week. So we started we from pre-K. Um and I teach even without a sound wall, but in the middle school, I've been teaching a lot of this too. Just like like the you know, the in like voice and unvoiced sounds and pronunciation changes in um certain vocab like word families, like morphological families. It's really handy. Yeah, the best the best part is when you listen to conversations and everyone does this. Teachers, I do it with Kristen. I'll call and judge. Wait, why is a freaking and we're like, what how, why does this sound? Why is this fall under this category? And like you'll sit, you'll just watch people go and like making all these sounds trying to figure it out. <laughs> But yeah, those are usually my most common calls to Kristen. Wait, why is this fall here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is a sound wall. And, it, and the reason I, I rolled that out is because it's so, like, as Kristen said, lessons A through J are rolling that out. So it's a huge portion and component of UFLY. Um, so, oops, let's go, whoops, come on. So here's grade two, uh, we're gonna look at a grade two phonics unit two. And I kind of highlighted. So you'll, again, similar template as you're used to. So here you have the overview on everything that's targeted in the unit, um, the different sounds, uh, as well as um, your the irregular words. If you see an irregular word italicized, 
the reason it's italicized means it's irregular for the kids right now. It's not a permanently irregular word. It's only irregular because the kids have, the students have not learned that pattern yet. So for them, it's still considered irregular. Um, the priority and the supporting standards. The routine. So again, we talked about the routines um, and I've already gone over those routines. Uh, the resources, wanted to explain. So uh, Kristen, I don't know if you wanna talk. So I, so, UFLY does have a virtual uh, kind of blending board. And, and so you could do virtual tile, tile manipulation uh, and word manipulation via like an iPad. Um, but then we all there, you can also do it with cutout cards and cutout tiles um, or magnetic tiles. There's lots of different ways. But I was going to ask Kristen, currently we're using at the lower grades, are we using the virtual ones? No, we're using like hands on ones right now, right? Kindergarten is using the magnet tiles yeah. and first grade has found a lot of success. They have one-to-one -one iPads and is finding a lot of success with the virtual. So it's basically like, if you're familiar with foundations with what we used to have, it's that tile board, but it's, there's not all the, the mess and losing tiles and all the kids have to do is just open up the app and it's all right there and they can manipulate on the iPad. So the first grade teachers say that's working extremely well. Great. And then once you get to the older, like you get to upper grades, the upper grades are using this a bit too, because there's a lot of a lot of skills in this that you wouldn't have thought to teach years ago or even in the past couple of years. Um, they use whiteboards and markers. Yeah. So in terms of materials. Um, okay, and then so here you'll see kindergarten through second grade, actually up through third and fourth, you'll see very similar essential questions and big ideas. Because in every unit, they're really looking at letters, uh, graphemes, more like graphemes um, with their sound uh, and how letters and sound help us. Uh, and then also looking at syllables and how understanding syllables and how they help us understand how to read words um, and as well as vowel sounds um, and, and then the overall structure of our language and how it helps us build our vocabulary and understanding. So the, the, you'll see very, very similar essential questions throughout all of the units. Um, and then I, just so you, these were written and you'll see some connections, especially in grades three and four, uh, to integrate with our reading and writers workshop as well, so that it all kind of pulls together. Um, and I think to give you an idea of here, I, this is the one I highlighted. So there's, you'll see, and again, so many of the less, each lesson had, or each concept, I should say, it says a lesson, but remember a lesson is actually two days. Um, but there's two objectives. One objective is usually the new concept that's being taught. So for instance, this one, it's read, write, and spell um, vowel, consonant, consonant words. But then there's also, uh, there's usually, typically if there's irregular words also being taught, um, taught or assessed, that's another objective. So the objective within the read and write the irregular words. And then over in the listen fors and the look fors, those are something I added. These are not from UFLY. Um, this is something, you know, I just wanted to give kind of the, the teachers a tangible, like, what are you listening for? What are you looking for to, to assess um, where the kids were? So th these are just very specific in terms of that objective. Like as a teacher, what should I be listening for to see if the kids actually grasp this concept and met this objective? What should I be looking for? Um, so that's what those listen fors and look fors are because they're not necessarily like a hard copy, like here's an exit slip assessment, right? So that's, where your assessments, your formative assessment is coming in. Um, and I believe those are the, those are the major parts of the lesson. Kristen, do you want to add anything to that? Nope. Sounds good. All right. Any questions? And actually, do you guys, my, my dog is whimpering by the door. Can you give me like 30 seconds to just go let her out? <laughs> yeah. Hold on one sec. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to ask while we wait for her? I was curious um, how the letters training that the teachers are getting, how does that dovetail with this? I'm assuming it probably dovetails very well, but it, it dovetails perfectly because last year's, so there's two years in the letters training and last year's letters training was all the foundational skills, starting with sound walls are in the letter training. So they learned about that in the letter training in all of, in how to apply and how to move from um, sounds and sound walls to how to teach all of the discrete phonics skills all the way up from the most basic to the most advanced. So this program 
basically, I mean, it's, it's really the application, which is so cool. It's like last year they did get like an, the teachers got a big info dump. And then now this year they get to take all that information and apply it. A lot of times when I'll go in and coach, what I'll do is if I'm going to model a lesson, I'll also go back into the letter training manual. I'll copy the page that fits the lesson and I'll attach my lesson plan to the page from the training that they did last year, just so they can see that connection. And a lot of teachers I don't need to do that for, they see it already. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions on this template or the components of the K through two lessons? They all look just like this. All right, um, so, Oops, nope, I already did that one. And you've seen all the, I emailed those recently too, so you should all have those in your email. So Logic of English Essentials is our major resource for three, third through fifth grade. Um, and you'll see, we do supplement with a couple others for these, but this is the major resource um, for those units. Again, I linked the, the website here. So if you're interested in kind of learning more specifically about what, what's embedded in this resource, um, these are not, this is not an open resource. So I don't, you're, you'll see some example, I think they're down here. I saw some example lessons, um, but, oh, here's some free resources actually. So some of them you can explore, but, uh, the books are actually paid for and the journals. So the spelling journals are also important. Kristen, do you want to talk a little bit about the spelling journals? Cause I know you're very excited about them. Sure. So, um. The spelling journal is really basically the um the sound well for older kids. So it's every so I started work using these with seventh grade last week. And basically what I mean, the first the first lesson that I taught was the 10 different ways to spell long A. And so which ones are the most common? So in so like AI and AY are right next to each other. So you'll open a page one of the pages in the journal, you have AI and AY right next to each other. AI you find at the beginning, a middle of a word, and it says A, and then AY you find at the end of the word, that also says A, but to know how, when to spell, use AI or AY, you know AI is in the middle, AY is at the end, um, and then we went through some of the more, some of the less common um, long A sounds, like there's only nine ways, only nine words that use EA says A, like steak, bear, all of those, so we, we, um, went through those and they had a really good time with that. They're really fascinated by that. And there's only nine words where E-I-G-H says A. They have all those in the journal. So um, we just talked about the most common patterns, the least common patterns, and when they should be used when they're in their when they're writing. And the nice thing is they travel with the children, right? Yeah. So um these start in third. And what we're hoping, we'll see what kind of condition they're in, but they start they they start with this right away um, in third grade. That's the plan anyway. We, I mean, we just started with them last week and they can travel with them as a resource all the way through eighth grade. The seventh graders, I mean, you know, these are seventh graders. They were actually pretty excited about them and they thought they were very useful right off the right off the rip. So that was um, you know, when seventh graders were excited about a spelling journal. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> You know, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started by saying, I'm going to teach you some, you know, just some tips on how to, you know, when you're really struggling with spelling with certain patterns, like some things are going to help you just know what to do. And one of the kids yells out, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's great. You know, it's so it's, I think these will be really useful. <laughs> yeah. My favorite, my favorite is that your story about the, the boy that or I think it was a little boy you said you were helping who was like why did no one teach me this there's just so much I mean, yeah there's just so many things that i mean it's it, the i feel like um with this whole science of reading movement so many new things have just been opened up and there's just so many i've just really enjoyed teaching word study because there's just so it just every day there's something new that i'm learning that i'm really excited about to bring into a classroom and yeah there's just one of the students that i was teaching a couple of years ago yeah <laughs> all right so if you want to explore that's another link to explore um that resource so so i talked about three through four really this especially currently being that transitional period so third grade when you look at the unit you'll see a blend of uni universe uh the ufly and logic of essential essentials they're up to in grade 
unit four, it phases out. So a unit three in grade three, you'll see a blend up to the end of unit three. And then starting in grade four, um, UFLY is not in the major lessons, but very likely will be infused for targeted and small group instruction for kids who still need some of that work. Um, three through four are still, as Kristen talked about, she's still going in and using the sound wall, especially as we transition. Um, so that's still being used for three and four. And then and you'll see in all of those units too that those less A through J lessons are optional. So anything that they see there, anything students need, the lessons are there. If they feel like they're, they're students based on their spelling inventory and other Dibbles assessments, um, they don't need necessarily need those. They can skip the ones that the students don't need um, and focus on the ones they do. Uh, there'll be targeted small group teaching around phonemic awareness and phonics skills. And then some lessons do use this resource called Morphe Magic. And some of some of embedding the Morphe Magic work into this was really to just kind of bring some more engagement because some of the lessons and essentials um, can be a little so direct that they're a little dry. So we were trying to um, make kind of find some more and you'll see some of the other stuff we did for engagement. But here's an example kind of of what the Morphe work looks like. So here they're looking at those prefixes. They're looking at, you know, the words, what different words, the um, like etymology, and then kind of the good things to know around them. So and here's an example lesson. So you can, again, another resource if you're curious as to what this looks like um, as a resource. And then there are also ties to mentor texts, the mentor texts that are in the reading and writing units um, to show those cross uh, kind of that transfer, but also to, in, again, increase engagement. So taking a peek at grade three, unit two, again, you'll see very similar style to what you saw before, except for here, you'll see uh, that there's an additional routine. Um, essentials, let me just pull this up so you can see it side by side. Um, in grade four, when they're not using UFLY, um, right, you know, as whole group regular, you'll see we lose that routine column. Um, cause essentials isn't, we use different parts of essentials depending on, um, so it's not necessarily every single lesson following a routine like UFLY was doing. So the routine didn't fit in the town. It didn't make sense to put that in the template. Um, and then over here, you'll see the three different primary resources that we've gone over. Here are the mentor texts, um, that are worked in and you'll see where they're worked in similar questions. I'm going to scroll. So you'll see here it says and lesson and document below on jobs of the apostrophe. So it'll it'll cite where and here you'll see you fly. So here's essentials, but then there's a you fly lesson. Um, and so when you go down to the lesson below, hold on, don't get dizzy. Hold on. <laughs> here we go. So here's it, it's very similar to like a structure, the structured reads where we're adding that additional component. So here's the jobs of the apostrophe lesson, um, what the objective is, the vocabulary, they're using punctuation celebration book um, to kind of get at the jobs of the apostrophe, um, the job of the apostrophe and connecting it to the essentials right here. And so you'll see kind of those additional lessons that we worked in for grades three through four. Again, we did a lot for three through four because those are the transition grades we're seeing the biggest need right now in terms of getting them from what they should already know um to where they need to be to access what you know the the, the first iteration of our curriculum um so those are the extras there and you'll see fourth grade has very similar we worked in the mentor text they do not have you fly anymore but they have those um and going down here you'll see this again very similar whether you have the extra here's contractions and pronouns they're using the book one of the mentor texts unspoken which is the mentor text from the reading unit and they're investigating um, these, these questions. And you'll see here, they're using essentials, but then they're reviewing the, the story. So it's really pulling it all together. And so those are the extra lessons down below. And I think, all right, so I'll pause there. Any questions on grades three or four units? And the last are the five, six units. And so those predominantly use essentials with some morphine magic 
Um, they don't have those extra pieces down below. And a lot of that too has to do with timing. So at the middle school, so at kindergarten through fourth grade, there is a discrete phonics word study block set aside 30 minutes. In the uh, middle school, they only have their one ELA block. So th this work is worked into their primary block for ELA. So that being said, the units couldn't be as um, it, it entail too much time because it has to be shared with. So they're sh they have less lessons to get through, um, and they but they do have five units versus four. So you'll see they're just a little bit shorter, and I'll show you one. I think. Oh, did I not link it? Um, let me go back to my Google Drive. Um, or I'll have. Did I not? I didn't link the lesson here. Well, that's silly. Um, nope, and that's our curriculum calendar. I had district folder. Ah, uh, ELA. Seventh grade. My folder's a little, it's a little delayed here. Um, no. Why did I go into? I just learned something, and and as you're surfing, I didn't know you could hover over those three dots. <laughs> oh, these. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's an example: seventh grade. Again, very similar approach, the resources. Um, we do, oh, so we did leave this here because our goal as we use this living document um, is to add some mentor text connections where we can, but living through this to feel timing, we wanted to do first before we added extra lessons in. Um, but you'll see here, you know, that this one actually is more robust, but you'll see it's far less lessons than what you see in the elementary. Um, but you'll see it's a mix of essentials, morphine magic, but similar thing with the, the, uh, objectives and the, they, these actually have assessments. So there's, you know, different work they can do that you can use for assessments. You don't need as much to look for us. And that's a seventh grade unit. And so that gives you kind of a smattering of each. Um, and the major resources. So I'm ready for questions and comments for all of it now. Aaron, the transition between, it's really a transition between you fly to LOE, right? I mean, that's the, that's the transition between as resources go. Yes. Yep. Yeah, the, but the biggest need, and Kristen can speak to this probably even more because she's really front lines with this, but the biggest need we're seeing is that, you know, our third and fourth graders, U flies only to second grade. So it's expected, and logic of English essentials kind of expects it too, like that, that kids have that foundation at third and fourth grade, and our students don't necessarily. So that's what Kristen has been working really hard on and bridging that gap. Yeah. And where does Le does Lexia get applied to this at all, or is it just another resource that's not necessarily written in the curriculum? Yeah, it's, so it's not necessarily written in the curriculum, but it is very highly utilized, especially for the tiers, tier two. Um, I mean, some of the student they do can use it for tier one, but really what we're seeing it used is a lot of the tier two. So for instance, I was in a middle school, and Chris, and I'll let you add on too, but I was in a middle school win group um subbing the other day and it the kids the students were using the lexia word work piece of it for their win group and actually some of the their conversations out like they were talking about the words and i didn't even know half the words <laughs> so they were doing some great work okay and phil were you asking about five through eight for lexia or pre-k through eight yeah just in general just in general like you know it's an expensive program and i think it's important to understand how does lexia tie to curriculum is it aligned to you fly in a time uh, aligned to depending on how it's being used it's probably more aligned to you fly than i would think than 
logic of English, but it is it, the line to both. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yes. Okay, no, no, that's what I wanted to hear. Like, so it's not in there. It's just another resource for intervention. Is that what I'm hearing? Not necessarily. Um, Pre-K through four, everybody uses it. Every student. So, and it aligns. I have kids all the time when I'm teaching a lesson, and they're, oh, I just learned dyslexia. So it does really. It it it's not like it. Um, it's not like we can necessarily uh, pair a Lexia lesson with a UFLY lesson because the Lexia is self-paced, but um, and it's really where the kids are. That's how Lexia works. But um, it does. I mean, it's it's based on the I mean, they're based on the same principles. You know, they're uh, Lexia is very aligned to the science of reading as well. I, and I'm again asking for the board perspective simply because there's a big dollar sign next to Lexia. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap. Right. And um, it's it's used and kids might come in and use it in the morning. I mean, different teachers yeah. do this in different ways. They might use it during their language arts block. They might use it. And every every kid is on it on a regular basis. Um, one way or another, teachers are working it in in pre-K through four. And then it's also a, at the middle school level, it's tier two and tier three in special ed. I just want to make sure I understood the alignment in that it's it's mm -hmm. not a confusion uh if it's if it's fits right in perfect mm -hmm. it does it's definitely aligned like mm -hmm. i said it's just not written in for specifically what kristen said it's it's not like we could tie it to a specific lesson and be like oh well this is where you're gonna do lexia blah 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 um especially okay. since it's adaptive yeah okay any board members have questions about the layout of this or what you heard Are you overwhelmed? <laughs> it's a it's a lot, right? It's a lot. Then this is meant to be an overview. So if you you know, I obviously take the time to go poke through these and see what's what, and you know, make sure you. I think the the logic of the things going through there's it's it's very purposeful, right? Is in the scope and sequence, it's very purposeful. So using these two resources really as the primary is, is, you know, the strategy that they're, they're implementing. Laura, you were going to say something. When you asked about being overwhelmed, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is not, not my <laughs> area. <laughs> I went from very comfortable to not comfortable. <laughs> so. And meanwhile, Laura, this is my thing. <laughs> this is my comfort zone. I, I really love how, you know, in many, many years of teaching first grade, beginning reading, how it how it's all like in one place, you know, um, in an, in a sequence. Um, I I, ne I never saw it that organized before. So <laughs> as a matter of fact, I want to order some of the materials for teaching my refugees how to read. <laughs> so great for that. Great for that. Yep. Now, is the spelling part, that spelling journal, is that part of Logic of English? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it under that? Okay, very good. I was just kind of checking out their website and I didn't notice it, but I just have to look a little deeper. Okay, thank you. I think this is Tracy's wheelhouse too, so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm excited. I just was introduced to UFLI, the website last week during Orton Gillingham training and, but everything they've been doing really goes along with all the research that I'm thinking about science of reading, which I know that Kristen's been studying for a lot longer than I have. So um, it's exciting that we're bringing this um, into our curriculum because it's really the direction that we should have been going a long time ago when I hear and read and hear on podcasts. I will say the teachers very much embraced it too. They're, they they really eat it up and are constantly asking Kristen for more or, you know, how to do things differently or so they're very bought into this. Because did you see results really fast with some of the techniques and, and this, the um, sequenced, you know, learning, it, it, it builds. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I crossed. I said, I was like, I'm, I'm hopefully, hopefully we'll see some in our eye ready. I can't imagine we wouldn't. So I'm very I'm like patiently awaiting some data, our dibbles data and our eye ready data. This From is what very I, new though. <laughs> I know, I know. It takes, it takes and, a long time like, to really see it. But yeah, and it's it's it was the first couple. I mean, even though everyone's bought in, it was clunky, and it's was a lot to learn. I mean, it took me a while to be able to be like I feel very strong coaching it now. But it did take. It was sort of felt like I was building the plane while I was flying it a little bit. So in the beginning, um, but it's yeah, it's it's starting to finally hit that right about now. Really hit where it's starting to feel smooth. And you're starting to see some um, kids that, you know, were, um, might've been struggling with things before are um, really starting to take off, but it's, it's, you know, we're all still learning it. It's pretty new. Oh yeah. We're, we're still in our learning curve for sure. <laughs> is part of the bridge of going to third and fourth grade, is that maybe picking up on some of the kids that had a little bit of pandemic loss, maybe as kindergartners or first graders. Or, um, for sure. Or we, we only had that, that one spring that the kids were not in the classroom, but, um, or is it just initiating a new program too? That oh, well, it's actually it's those two things. Plus Holy the boy. fact that now we actually have the research behind how we're learning, um, how yeah. we learn. And add in masks and in, yeah. add in new research, add in um, kids, you know, 25% of kids being absent for more than 18 days. I that's mean, true. there is yeah. a lot. And that's, you know, forget just the closure. It's just, it's not necessarily just about the closure. It's about the, you know, year plus that mm -hmm. these kids have just had, you know, wearing a mask and then being able to see that you know, making the sounds and what that looks like. There's a lot of factors in this. And so, you know, talk about when you implement something new that you see the dip first and then hopefully the sky, you know, skyrocketing. So that's what we're, we're hoping for in the implementation of this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you have a lot to look at. Um, I think... And I'm just trying to pop into my calendar real quick. I think your next meeting is February 15th. That is scheduled for math. Um, I think we need to, because Aaron, it was the phonics piece added into this. I don't have the calendar in front of me. I, no. I think we're early on it, right? No, what we thought, I think we thought for some reason that we would be done with, like, I think when we originally planned, we thought science would be done and we'd be going to phonics right now. I, we're doing a little different than we initially Um so I think we're going to need one more meeting in January because we're supposed, this is supposed to go in February, I believe, to the BOE for adoption. I think January is supposed to be science and February was supposed to be phonics. Well, I think now science for the most part, what else do you have to present at this point for science? No. Nothing, science, right? right. You're, you're set with that because yep. that's going to go to the board. Yep. Um, so I for guess January, right? that I would yeah that would be the yep. regular January meeting that it's and it's a first review for them so it's mm -hmm. you know I don't expect adoption there um but just from the standpoint of getting off of the your plate Aaron and off the curriculum committee's plate once it moves to the board level it's a little bit easier I think as far as the the workload if you're looking at and I know December's crazy for folks looking at a January um meeting because I'm not sure, like we can blend things together. Do you want to blend in? Let's be honest. We're 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 implementing the phonics already, right? Let's be honest about where we're at. Um, so we could easily blend in the phonics with the math if you don't have a lot of feedback and do a math kickoff in that February meeting, or and then send it to the board, or we could do a January meeting that's just phonics based, where you could provide some feedback and then kick that to the board for their February meeting. And then your February 15th meeting would just be math. Which would you prefer? I can kick off math in February, but I, it won't be done until end of March or be like April between March and April break is when math will be fully done K-8, but I can still kick it off and show I'll have, I'll have some, I'll have some fifth grade done and I'll have some elementary school done. So, so I does can it, show both. Does it make sense to dump that February date that we have on our calendar then, Aaron, and 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 maybe just make it a phonics thing? It, probably, yes. So is is later January a better thought for that for folks? 
because you're I know you're gonna have to take some time to go through that those documents there's a lot there mm -hmm. so I have the next curriculum is February 2nd that what you were saying let's see how it went into my calendar hold on Or was the fifteenth the board of ed meeting? I don't have anything on the fifteenth. I might just I might have the wrong day. But. I definitely have a BOE curriculum meeting on my schedule for three forty-five to four forty-five. It says math for for Wednesday, February fifteenth. I, I do not have anything for February. You said February second, Laura. Let me. I'll move it over to the fifteenth. <laughs> And that, listen, we were trying to just set some dates. If we want to adjust, I think that's okay. Is That's kind of where our conversation's at. If Erin's not ready to roll out math and push things, we can't, what's the point of doing it? Let's wait till she's ready. But let's make sure we get the, let's, so let's maybe back up and try and have a late January meeting so you don't have to sit on that phonics for too long. And maybe we can have that pushed at the, as a first run at the February BOE meeting and hopefully approval of science at the February BOE meeting. What are your thoughts on that? Can I have Brenda schedule that so that we could discuss late January for phonics or sometime in January? Late that work for the three of you? Yeah. Okay. So then I think what I just heard Aaron say was put the February 15th meeting on hold. Is that correct, Aaron? If we're doing January, yes. Yeah, because you're not going to be, yeah. well, that's supposed to be math. So right. It's my, right. So, so either that happens. or switch it to phonics, one or the other. Yep. All right. And I, I would prefer that we do a, a first presentation to the board at the February meeting for phonics <laughs> just as a rollout and then let them have a month to sit with it. Right? Okay. Okay. So no February 15th meeting. And I will have Brenda schedule a January, late January phonics curriculum meeting. And, and we're introducing the science to the board in January. Correct. And they'll, they'll have it for a month. With, and then we would vote on that in at our February board meeting. That would be my goal. And then at that February board meeting, they'd vote on science and get the kick off of phonics if we can. Okay. Sounds good. Work for you? Okay. That's unless anybody else has any questions or comments. That's all I had. No. Nope. Okay. Thank you, Aaron and Kristen. You guys are amazing. Yeah, they're working hard. <laughs> you yeah. like um, science also. What'd you say, Laura? I said that Kristen and Aaron like science rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and phonics. They rock like phonics too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can adjourn. It's 6.37 p.m. And I'm heading off to the HMS concert. Oh, enjoy. Is Mary Kay going to do her um, debut I, again? Tonight? I think so, so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs>